My name is Steve Hayes from Siemens and we're going to be taking a look at the difference between analogue signals and digital signals on these two radars. So we have a milliamp radar with heart values and a Profibus PA uh, radar connected to various I.O. The reason for doing this test is we've recently had a customer um, who had issues with some of their radars and when we received them back we noticed that there was corrosion in the junction box. So we started to do some tests to, to see what would happen with condensation on different types of signals and how digital signals came out better in those tests. So over this, the course of this video and uh, some, some videos coming up in the future we'll go into that in more detail. There's also a post by James Powell I'll put the link for that on, on this post and he's done some tests himself and there's some articles to back up our findings. So moving on to the tests. Okay, so we're going to take a look at the hardware that we're using to test these two radars. So here we have the Profibus radar and the one on the taller stand is the 4 to 20 radar. So this is why we have slightly different um, distance readings but we're focusing on how stable these are rather than accuracy at this point. So the Profibus radar is connected via one section of cable about a metre long to our new Siemens compact field unit which is Profinet to Profibus PA. Plug and produce capability so via here we have uh, normally we have to use software to set the address this will set the address of this unit it also uses generic GSDs so you don't have to start putting manufacturer specific GSDs in here so you can uh, use other manufacturers with this, with, with this kit without uh, doing a download and a compile. It also monitors the voltage and current on each of its connections so as we continue with the test we'll be able to monitor this and, and bring back uh, additional diagnostics so moving over to the, to the 4 to 20, we're on the second part of the rig here. They're both connected together via one Ethernet cable and it's Profinet or Profibus over that cable. Uh, but we're taking this back into Siemens ET200 ISP and it's an analogue input card with heart on. So that enables to, to, us to bring back both values and again it's via a very short run of cable so we're not actually looking at noise interference here, we're just purely looking at uh, uh, how condensation or water ingress affects the signal. Both of these are coming back to an S7500 PLC which is sat behind this unit and this is for these just monitoring these values and recording them on a, on a WinCC flex faceplate that you can see in the background. So moving on to the next test. Okay, so the next stage is to, to put some water inside of these junction boxes. Um, I would say that we are trained professionals and you shouldn't be tipping water into any instrument. The LR5250 is made and encapsulated inside so the water is not going to get into the electronics, it's purely just going to get to the terminals and the cables. So I'm logging this data and as you can see the, the process values are pretty steady so I'm, it's pretty extreme I'm going to do a bit of uh, accelerated aging here so we're going to put some into the Profibus terminal box and into the 4 to 20 and what you'll see straight away in the background is my milliamp value has gone full scale because it's shorted it is extreme if we were doing condensation it would be a slightly different value but I've lost my process value. It's not going to a fail safe condition because as far as the 250 is concerned it is happy, it's encapsulated, it's sending out the right signal. This is purely to do with the cabling of the 4 to 20. So remotely we have no indication and if I was a little bit extreme, less extreme on the water ingress, so I sprayed this, I would see the value starting to jump around rather than being saturated. But what I can see from the results is my, di my digital values are steady. 
they're not being affected by the water ingress. Now with Profibus, that would probably be okay, but after a certain amount of time on a Profibus network, using low cost split connects, we would start to see that corrosion on the, on the, on the connections starting to cause network issues. Now we don't have that with the compact field unit because we don't have a network uh, situation. What we can see, the compact field unit has now gone to amber because it's monitoring the voltage. So we're still getting data, so we're not going to get a red flashing light like you can see here with these two that are open circuit. It's warning us that the, the conditions have changed. So that diagnostics is now coming back to my S7-1500. We're going to have a look at that in more detail with software tools, PDM and TIA portal over the next few screens. So to summarise the, the findings, what we need to take into account, we've, we've done some accelerated ageing here, we've been pretty brutal with the, the water that we put into the junction box. Normally water ingress happens over a prolonged period, so you wouldn't get any uh, sudden indication until you got to this point of, of saturation. With a small bit of water in on, on a milliamp signal, it will be more prone to picking up noise because you're now shorting the signal to, to earth so you're creating noise loops so you might start to see signals jumping around but you would definitely see with a small amount of water ingress uh, some uncertainty on your milliamp value but your digital value would stay okay and there's still things to, to, to worry about um, with, with your profibus signals I'll use this as an example, a low cost split connect so this is a, a, what we call a T and your Profibus spurs come off. If you've got water into here, it would work, but as these spades started to corrode, you could end up losing the whole of your network. It's a low cost solution, but can uh, mean a high cost maintenance. So then you would move over to something called uh, an AFD, or similar products are available. So this again separates the trunk from the spurs uh, and so if we did get water ingress on one of these spurs we would only lose that but because it's got short circuit protection built into this it would prevent the, the profibus value getting to the, to, the, to the PLC but you would only lose that one value the rest of the network would carry on working so as you can see there's, there's various solutions but really the, the, the best solution is good mechanical installation using the right cable glands using a digital technology that's not affected by noise and gives you more accuracy.